Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Let's move on to the last section of the topic of intervals. This is page 43 of the Grade 5 Discovering Music Theory Workbook. And we have this final challenge to complete. And really, to be honest, comparing in mind everything that you've done so far, this is the this is the easy bit, just a few little revision attempts at these intervals. There's nothing new here at all. The only difference now is that they're actually in the context of a melody. The same principles apply as usual and it's interesting to remember that when intervals are placed one on top of each other, as in a chord or a harmony, they're called harmonic intervals and when they come one after each other, they're a melodic interval because it's as if it's in a melody, one note after the other. And so we're doing exactly the same as we've done before. We've just got to pick the notes out as suggested. So here we have this first interval. We bear in mind the key signature just as usual to see how it applies to the notes that we are looking at. But we always count the lowest note as the tonic. And we always start with the number first. So we have a key signature of B flats, E flats, A flats, D flats, G flats and C flats. But apart from seeing how it relates to notes, we always take the lowest note as our tonic. So here we have an E natural. We're in the bass clef, we have an E natural as our lowest note. Now let's count the interval first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know straight away it's a something seventh. And here this note is a D, and of course it's a D flat because of your key signature. So let's look at this. Now if we're taking E as our lowest note as our tonic, E to D sharp would be the major version because E major requires D sharps and then of course it's not D sharp coming down one would be a minor from major to minor neither is it D natural it's D flat because of the key signature so we've gone from major to minor to diminished it's a diminished seventh so we have the same process here between these two notes that are bracketed and so we can first of all count the, the interval one two three four five six we know that it's a sixth of some sort so here this note is a G flat and then here this is an E double flat. So let's look at what's happening here. So in the key of G flat major, G flat to E flat is a major interval. And then because it's E double flat, we've gone from major to minor. So it's a minor sixth. Alternatively, if you find it really tricky thinking in the key of G flat, you can just think, well, G to E is major, therefore parallel movement down G flat to E flat is also major and then you can knock off from the E flat to the E double flat and just sort of like adjust the interval to find your minor interval that way. So we know that it's a minor sixth. Perhaps now you can just press pause and try some of these on your own. 
And so I'm hoping you've had a go at the rest of this. Let's check through these together now. So here we have the interval of a one to a second of some sort. So we can just go ahead and we can say that straight away. Now here, this note is a G, it's a G natural. And here we have an A flat. Now we know that G to A is a major interval, it's a full tone. And then a semitone smaller takes us from major to minor, so that's soon dealt with. And finally we have this interval here. Let's count the number first. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's the sixth of some sort. Now we have here an A flat because don't forget your key signature is active on that note. And here we have a C, D, E, F flat. Now let's just think about this thinking from A flat to F flat might be a little bit tri tricky. Now A major would require F sharps because we know that A major has a key signature of F, C, G sharps. So A to F sharp would be major. A to F would be minor and so similarly if A to F is minor A flat to F flat is also minor so that's how we can work that one out that's a minor oh I didn't write the answer down did I that's a minor second that's a minor second we just worked that one out didn't we <laughs> There we go, getting carried away. And so now we move on to the final exercise of what is a particularly intense chapter, I think. So well done for getting this far. We will get some further practice on this, so don't worry. We will be looking at this again later. However, let's look at this. So everything is exactly as you've discussed so far with me. The only complication now is we have a slightly tricky clef and we're going to have some compound intervals. But let's just take it through a step at a time and it's easily sorted. So if we're in the tenor clef, we've got three sharps, F sharps, C sharps, G sharps. However, we always take our lowest note as the tonic. So we're looking at these two notes. Now this is quite low, so I'm going to jump it up an octave just to help me and then we'll just think of it in a compound interval sense. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight takes us to here. So if that's a C, that's a B. And then this note here is a C, D, E, F, G. However, of course, it's a G sharp. Now we take our lowest note as the tonic, but let's just count. It's a one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a sixth of some sort. Now B major has a key signature of F, C, G, D, A. So G sharp is part of that major scale pattern. That's a major interval. So we could either say it's a compound major sixth or now we know that it's major we could just say that it's a major thirteenth because one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and so you could do that I find it easy to do the compound version first of all one because I find it hard to read down there but also I need to know that fourths fifths and octaves are perfect. Otherwise, you need to also remember that 11th, 12th, and 15th are perfect. So we've got the same procedure again here. And so because I'm not comfortable in this clef, I'm going to just jump this up an octave so I can read it more easily. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so actually that's a C sharp. And then this note here is a C, D, E, F, G, A. And the interval 
from here, one, two, three, four, five, six is a sixth. Alternatively, we could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteenth. So it's a compound sixth of some sort, or we could just say a thirteenth. Now then here, our lowest note is C sharp. Now we know that C to A is a major interval, and so C sharp has made that interval smaller by raising the bottom note, so we've gone from major to minor. So that's a compound minor sixth or a minor thirteenth. There we go. Now here, this next interval, let just see what notes we're dealing with. So this is a C, B, A, G, F, E. And then this is a C, D, E, F double sharp. And so it's going to be a compound second. E to F would be next door. So it's a compound second of some sort. Or alternatively, you can see it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth, or it's a ninth. Now let's think about this. E to F sharp would be major, because E major requires F sharps. But because it's F double sharp, we've made it bigger still. We've augmented it, so it's an augmented interval. So it's a compound augmented second, or we could just say augmented ninth. We are nearly there. Let's look at this interval here. So again, because I'm finding this quite hard to read down here, I want to get up to middle C area so I can work out the notes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, takes me to an E which of course is sharpened, and then if that's an E, F, G, A, B. Okay, so that's an E sharp to a B. Now we know, we take our lowest note as the tonic, but E sharp's a tricky one. So we know that E to B is a perfect fifth. However, Because it's E sharp, we've made it smaller, and so that's going to diminish it, isn't it? So we have E sharp, let's just check that. Yeah, we've definitely got E sharp to B. So E to B is perfect, E sharp is diminished, and so it's a diminished fifth. However, of course, it's a compound diminished fifth. Or we could say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelfth, a diminished twelfth. But of course, you would need to know that twelfths, just like fifths, need to be perfect. No major or minor there. And finally, let's look at this last interval here. So here, this is a note. C, B, A, G, F, E, D. This is a D. And then here, this is a D sharp. Is it C, D sharp? Yes, that's a D sharp. So we have an octave. There's no compound element here. It's an octave of some sort. We know that D to D is perfect, but because it's D to D sharp, we've extended that, we've augmented it. So it's an augmented octave. 
and congratulations indeed you finished this section on intervals it's a massive topic I do realize that don't worry if it's a little hazy still we will get some practice on this later however I'm going to suggest that we don't turn to this at the moment let's leave it let's just let it settle let's give our brains a chance to forget it a little bit and then we can come back to it later in the practice exam paper as a spot of revision just to refresh our memories. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. And for advert free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.